In the rugged mountains of southwest Pakistan lies its largest province of Baluchistan. Far from the bustling cities of Lahore and Karachi, this region has been the battleground for a 60-year-long insurgency by the Baluch ethnic minority. Al Jazeera's Islamabad bureau chief, Ahmed Zaidan, is heading into the heart of that insurgency. It's been a seven-hour drive, which started from the provincial capital of Quetta. It has taken months of sensitive negotiations to get here. Finally, Al Jazeera gets to meet the Baluch fighters. It's a first. They have never agreed to be filmed before. As some prepare breakfast, others prepare to receive their leader. The firing of an RPG announces his arrival. And the leader is escorted to meet Zaydan. Given the secretive nature of their base, the fighters are wary of allowing cameras to film it. So they take their leader and Zaydan to an area away from their camp. The Baluch uprising against Pakistan's government has received little attention worldwide. Most eyes have been turned toward the fight against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda in other areas of Pakistan. But the Baluch people have never accepted being part of this country. Many of them demand greater control over Baluchistan's natural resources and mineral riches. And these fighters who met with Al Jazeera demand outright secession from Pakistan. Our goal is to free Punjabi tasallut se chutkara asil karna aur Baloch qoum ke liye ek khushal zindagi hai jisme aman insaf aur barabari ho hum uske liye jadujad kar rahe hain sawal ye paida hota hai pakistani kaun hai pakistani qoum hai pakistani to qoum nahi hai yahan sindhi hai baloch hai pashtun hai punjabi hai ye sare aqwam hai pakistani to koi qoum nahi hai ab hame zabardasti kyun koi pakistani bana raha hai aur bana ke hamare wasail ko lootna chahta hai तो यहां हम उसके ادارों के खिलाफ लड़ रहे हैं जितने भी उसके इंतजामी ادارے हैं चाहे पुलिस है कोई और ادارے हैं जो इस लूटमार में उसको तक्वियत दे रहे हैं जो उसके ताकत को बढ़ा रहे हैं हम उनको कमजोर कर रहे हैं obsessed with secrecy like most guerrilla movements the Baluch insurgents fight in separate, independent groups with elusive leaders whom very few can identify. Baluch Khan tells Al Jazeera that it is this secrecy and lack of a command structure that will make sure that the Baluch insurgents are not easily defeated. Amek Markas. एक जगह नहीं बनाना चाहते शायद नहीं चाहते इसलिए कि तमिल टाइगर्स का आप लोगों के सामने है कि एक बिल्कुल वो उन्होंने एक मुनजम फौज बनाई जिनका यूनिफॉर्म था और एक खत्ते में उनका आई कमान भी आके जाहिर हुआ करते करते कुछ सालों में उन्होंने शिकस्त देखा कुछ ऐसे वजूहत है इसी वजह से हो सकता है आगे जाके जब जरूरत महसूस होगा हम एक होंगे एक यूनाइटेड क्यों हम एक قوم है हम इस قوم की आजादी के लिए लड़ रहे हैं Baloch fighters say that it is this burning desire to free their land from Pakistan that sustains them in this harsh environment. 
But as they fight for separation, they blame the Pakistani army for instigating the conflict in the first place. Baluch Khan's ancestors, the Baluch people, traced their roots to ancient tribes from around the city of Aleppo in Syria. They believe these tribes migrated to this region in pre-Christian times. Over the centuries, they say, this rugged landscape sheltered them from numerous invading armies and helped the Baluch people maintain their independence. I think Baluchistan is best understood as a no-man's land, nobody really cared about, as a very mountainous and desert-like area, which was largely irrelevant throughout history. For that reason, Baluchistan served very well the purpose of being a refuge area for people who could not be accommodated in the Indian or Iranian empires, who moved to today's area to Baluchistan, taking refuge and, and carving out some space for themselves. According to Baluch perception, the Baluch uh, see themselves as uh, uh, people of Arab origin. Uh, some Baluch scholars even see the Baluch as, as conquerors uh, moving eastward, uh, always in search of freedom and, and self-determination. Kalat, the historic capital of Balochistan. Six decades have passed since it was annexed by Pakistan, one of that country's first acts as a newly formed state. Al Jazeera met with Emir Muhyiddin, a prince of the royal family that ruled Balochistan at the time that Pakistan took over. Muhyiddin says that the only reason Baluch leaders chose to join the new country was a sense of religious obligation. Both sides were Muslim. Kalat which represented most of what is Baluchistan today and Baluch areas, they were given the choice to either become independent or become part of Pakistan. The both houses, of houses of common and the house of uh, upper and lower houses, they voted for independence. Whereas my father, having inf influence of Islamic and at that time, of the thought that an Islamic Republic is being made in Pakistan, he had his preferences that we should have an understanding with Pakistan and then join Pakistan. So during this interim period, force was used, army action in April 1948 was used. You see, Pakistan became independent in August 1947. Balochistan joins Pakistan in April 1948. For this nine-month period, Balochistan was independent. 
Kalat was independent. Then by force, the, sex, uh, the instrument of accession was signed and Pakistan took over the state of Kalat. Balochistan was forcefully uh, occupied, annexed by the Pakistan forces. It wasn't part of Pakistan in 1948. Um, so Pakistani army rolled in in um, Balochistan. Um, somehow under Duris and the Khan of Kalat, um, uh, who was the head of Balochistan, had to sign an accession treaty. So that was the main reason we all uh, still do not recognize uh, Balochistan as part of Pakistan and we think uh, it's an occupied territory. Over the last six decades, the Baluch rebellion and Pakistan's suppression of it has claimed thousands of lives. Among the dead are many key leaders of the...